Welcome to the Suzanne and Sarah YouTube channel. I am Sarah Willis, and today we are talking about a real estate investing topic on navigating the real estate landscape of single family homes versus multifamily units. We're going to dive into this topic and why you might want to choose one or the other. Want to get into real estate investing and you can't decide whether your first one should be a single family home or a multifamily investment well there's pros and cons to both and it's a rewarding adventure no matter which way you go there's no right or wrong but it's definitely important to know the facts as we said each option comes with its own set of challenges and advantages they cater to different investing goals and preferences so first thing is to know what your goals are and your preferences but in this guide, we're going to talk about the key factors to weigh when deciding between the single family home and the multifamily option. The first point that we're talking about is entry point and affordability. Single family homes often is seen as a more accessible entry point for first time investors. These, these properties are typically more affordable. You're getting one door versus multiple, right? So it allows investors to dip their toes into the real estate market really without a substantial upfront investment. Often loans associated with single family homes can be more amenable to putting less down than these multifamily type loans as well. Now, multifamily units can offer an economy of scale in the long run, but they often require a larger initial investment. And when we're thinking about economy of scale with multiple doors, so you're getting one loan for multiple doors, right? Versus one loan for one door. As you know, if you've had a mortgage before, there are lots of fees associated with a loan. So having to pay all those fees only once for multiple doors can be a benefit to you in the long run. So purchasing a duplex, a triplex, or an apartment building might have higher capital outlay for you upfront compared to a single family home. But again, in the long run, it's going to save you money. Our second consideration is cash flow and rental income. So single family homes are attractive for investors who are seeking stable and predictable rental income. So you've only got one tenant in there. There's reduced risk of income fluctuations. However, when there's a vacancy, it does have a more immediate impact on cash flow, right? Because there's not any other units in that building to make up for what you're losing in rent, right? So your tenant is, is uh, gone, you're, you have a vacancy for a month, you're not making any money, right? Versus if only one of your four units is gone, you've still got some cash coming in. So multifamily units provide potential for multiple streams of rental income, right? So if one unit's vacant, income from the other remaining units can help mitigate the impact of that that cash flow loss from having one vacancy. So diversity enhances stability of the rental income over time. Our third consideration is property management and maintenance. So managing a single family home is generally simpler in terms of maintenance and property management. Investors can handle repairs and tenant concerns on a more individual basis if you've got a relationship with one tenant. However, with multiple single family properties, that workload can accumulate. So just keeping in mind where you are in proximity to your single family home, how well connected you are, whether you're managing yourself or hiring a property manager is just, you know, of course, part of these considerations and how many doors you have. With multifamily units, if you have multiple doors in one building, right, you consolidate property management to a single location. So you're only, if you've got, you know, three people in one building with an issue, you're going to one location. So it's, it's streamlined in a sense. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're going to one building to do maintenance on the entire thing versus traveling all around potentially one city or one state in order to repairs and maintenance on multiple single family homes. So 
with the multifamily units, it can make management more efficient, but it also means that more issues can affect multiple units simultaneously. So for example, you know, in one of my own buildings for, you know, there was a, to a toilet clog in one, in one unit and it affected the tenant below it, right? Because it clogged and, you know, drained into the unit below it. So when you've got multiple units in one building and there's a problem, it could affect more than one person. So also a consideration when it comes to repairs and maintenance there. Fourth consideration for today has to do with appreciation and market trends. So single family homes historically appreciate a lot faster than multifamily units. So depending on the market you're in, single family homes might not make you a ton of cash flow in the short term, but that you can count on them to appreciate over time and really increase uh, your net worth, right? Because a well-maintained single family home in a desirable location has a lot of potential capital gains for an investor versus a multifamily unit, which tend to appreciate slower and they are oftentimes like valued based on how well you keep up with rents, the demand for rental properties in your area, and just really the overall economic climate, right? So in order to keep a multifamily property appreciating, they must be well-managed, well-maintained, and strategically located, right? So well-managed, meaning we are keeping up with our rent raises annually, well-maintained, meaning we are keeping up with exterior maintenance, you're keeping up with interior maintenance on things like your HVAC systems and, you know, interior paint and just appliances and, and things like that. And so if you maintain all of these things, right, the, between the rents and the maintenance on the interior and exterior of these buildings, and it's in a good location, you can experience significant appreciation. But if you're not keeping up with those rents and you have a lot of deferred maintenance on your multifamily building, you're probably not going to appreciate the way you could. Finally, risk management. So in a single family home, investing in these, it typically involves lower risk because it's a more straightforward ownership structure, right? So the risk of extended vacancy periods is the only thing that really impacts your cash flow that should be considered. So when you don't have someone in your single family home, you're not making any money and you're responsible for all those utilities and mortgage. But multifamily units, while they offer diversification, they also pose a higher risk if you have significant vacancies or unforeseen challenges affecting multiple units at once. So there are, you know, more people tends to be more liability. So definitely proper due diligence and proactive management on your multifamily units is crucial to mitigating risk on multifamily buildings. In conclusion, deciding between a multifamily and a single family investment depends on your goals, your risk tolerance, and really how much you have to invest. They all in different markets have different returns, different accessibility, and really just evaluating these five things that we talked about today, your financial ability, your long-term objectives, and whether you intend to manage yourself or use a property manager will dictate what path you choose. But you are in the right place. Suzanne and I help our clients analyze all of these things and more based on your goals and help you get into the right place for you and make good decisions based on the real estate market here. So give us a call when you're ready to invest in either single family homes or multifamily here in the Central Oregon area or beyond. We're here to connect and help. Thanks for watching.